This is a helix antenna and in today's video I want to talk about kind of what it is and show you how you can build one because I actually need to build one so I decided to document the, the process. Uh, this is actually the exact same antenna which you may have seen in uh, two videos ago when I was showing you my setup for receiving HRPT weather satellites. This would normally be clamped in the focal point of a dish antenna and so this antenna would actually act as a as a feed for that dish replacing the stock LNB and as you can tell from from this text embedded in, in the 3D print it's for 1700 megahertz and it's left hand circularly polarized. Now I'm gonna talk about what all that means shortly. You can see that it's basically just three main parts. You have the helical conductor itself, you have some sort of reflector plate, in this case it's a, it's a circle cut out of sheet metal, and you have a connector which ties those, those two things together. And then also you have a bunch of other things to physically support the shape of the antenna. In my case I'm using 3D printing, however before we actually get into the build process I want to say that 3D printing is entirely optional. All that's really doing is just keeping the spacing between these turns, in this case 0.14 wavelength spacing and 5.8 turns. Actually this is probably more like 6 turns, but anyway, uh, 3D printing optional. There are many ways to, to do this with, without a 3D printer. I have some other examples of helical antennas. For instance, this one, which may look identical at first glance, but if you actually take a look at the at the direction of the spirals, you can see that one is clockwise and the other is counterclockwise. So this is the, the right hand circularly polarized one, and this is the left hand. Helical antennas, as you can probably tell from just the shape, are circularly polarized. So I kind of like to think of them as as the circular equivalent of a of a Yagi antenna. Unfortunately, I don't have one to show you, but you've probably seen it, seen Yagi antennas for Wi-Fi or 5 GHz FPV drones and stuff like that. Those are linearly polarized, meaning they, they are just in one plane. The helical antenna, depending on the direction in which the wire is wound, you either get left-hand circular polarization, which is like this, or you get right-hand circular. If you want to receive a right hand circular polarized signal, so if this antenna was transmitting and I tried to receive it with this antenna, we would get a theoretical infinite decibel loss, meaning that we wouldn't really be able to receive anything. So you need to match the polarizations of the helical antennas. If you are using a helical antenna to, to receive a linearly polarized signal, such as what this router antenna would transmit, it will work but at a 3 decibel penalty basically, at a 3 decibel loss between circular and and linear polar polarization. Circular polarized antennas have one massive advantage, which is why almost exclusively you will see that satellites use circular polarization. This is also the purpose of these antennas, is to receive signals from satellites in space. This is actually the perfect example. This is the radio sound. You can think of this as an atmospheric satellite. And it, it just has this whip antenna. This is a linear antenna. And normally the radio sound would be hanging from, from the balloon kind of like this, in this orientation, with the antenna pointed downwards. If you have a receiver, let's imagine this, this router is the receiver of, of the radio sound. As long as those two antennas are, in, are parallel to each other, they'll be able to receive, receive each other very well. If you tilt it like this, where they are actually at a right angle, in theory, now your receiver won't be able to receive anything from the transmitter, because the antenna's polarization is completely 90 degrees mismatched. If you have instead the receiver with a circular antenna, such as a Helix or a QFH antenna, which is what you may be familiar with from APT and LRPT, it actually doesn't matter which orientation these antennas are relative to each other, the signal strength will still be the same, except there will be a slight, slight mismatch loss between the linear and circular which doesn't really matter much in practice. However, for satellite use, both the transmitter and the receiver would be circular, so the most efficient data transfer occurs. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep all of this in the video or if it's just me rambling. Anyway, I have some more examples of helical antennas. So these ones, these ones are for 1700 megahertz, as you can read over here. If you have a helical antenna for a higher frequency, such as 2250 megahertz, so this is also left hand circular polarized. You can see it's not, it's in a much worse <laughs> worse shape than these, so these ones are pre pretty new. This is one of my first helical antennas that I built. You can see that it's much smaller, even though it's more or less the same number of turns and, and spacing. 
So the, um, the number of turns gives the antenna the gain. So if you have more turns, just like with a Yagi antenna, if, if the antenna is longer, basically it has more gain. It, it will receive the signal at a, at a higher strength. However, when you are using it as a dish feed, which is what these are intended for, you don't really care about the gain of the antenna, you care about its, its beam width. So you have to match the gain or the length of the antenna to the shape and the focal distance and stuff like that of the dish. I have an entire video on, on dish antennas if you are interested in that. But basically this means that because these are intended to be used with the same kind of dish antenna, their number of turns and the spacing are basically the same. You can take this to an extreme, for example, I can take this tiny antenna for 8 gigahertz, if you can read that. Let's see. This is for 8.1 8, 8 gigahertz for X-band weather satellites. Now this one has a bit more turns, it's not very readable. I didn't expect this antenna to work, it actually did work, so this was just a little experiment, literally a little experiment. So you can see the difference between, between 1.7 gigahertz, 2.2 gigahertz and 8 gigahertz. And we even have an example of, uh, of 1 gigahertz, or in this case 995 megahertz. This is also a, a, an antenna intended to be used as a dish feed, however it has fewer turns because I physically ran out of 3D printer space. This actually was able to listen to state-of-the-art Russian military satellites, so as you can see really we have helical antennas for all, all kinds of purposes and all of these at some point were able to receive signals from, from a satellite in space. But none of that matters right now. What we want to learn and what we want to see happen in this video is of course building a helical antenna from scratch and I've prepared the materials needed. Uh, first off, we have the support for the helix itself. Again, I'm, I'm opting for a 3D printed option. However, as I said, 3D printing is not needed. For example, I actually found this. You can take something like this piece of plastic and just cut out one strip of it, drill holes in it, and then mount it vertically on the on the reflector plate. And that's going to act as a, a probably good enough support for it. I'm using 3D printing. Now the diameter of the helix is directly related to the frequency that you want the helix to operate at. You've probably figured it out already. This one is for 2.4 gigahertz. You can probably tell from that frequency. I actually want to use it with this. I want to set up a long range Wi-Fi link. Basically, I've just removed the the two original antennas and this is where I want to mount a directional antenna such as the Helix. So this would be an, a perfect solution for FPV, for drone news and, and stuff like that, which also operates in the 2400 MHz band. So if you want to figure out the diameter needed for the frequency of that you want the helix to operate at. Uh, there will be a link in the description to my website where I have a calculator for this exact thing. If you have a 3D printer and also want to just print the support for the helix like this, also a link in the description to a GitHub repository where there's code that allows you to generate these. So you have the support for the helix. Uh, to make the helix itself, I have a coil of normal solid core wire. I believe this is four millimeter cross section. So around 2.5 millimeter diameter, I think. The ideal diameter for this would be 2.4 millimeters, according to the calculator, I believe. Uh, the diameter is not very important. For instance, you have seen that with this giant antenna for one gigahertz, I'm using very undersized wire and it still worked fine. And for these, for 1.7 gigahertz, I'm actually using slightly thicker wire and that also works. So it's not very important. What's important is the diameter of the helix itself, not really the wire. Uh, to make the to make the reflector, which will go on the bottom of the helix, what I like to do and what I've done in all of these is I've just cut out a circle or a square from a scrap microwave case. So this is again something that you can get extremely easily from any scrapyard, literally just a piece of, of a microwave casing. You can use a computer case or a power supply case, anything like that. As long as it's easy to cut and easy to work with. Right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that piece of, of microwave case that you've just seen and I'm going to cut out a square that's I think 10 by 10 centimeters for this frequency. Again, the calculator will, will tell you that. Uh, a square reflector works just fine as you've seen here. The only reason 
why these use circular reflectors is because I thought it looked, looked better and it's a bit easier to mount on my dish. However, you don't need to bother with cutting out a circle like this. You can just cut out a square and it's gonna work fine. And it's also what I want to do for this, this Wi-Fi antenna. Right, there we go. So I've cut out a smaller piece of the, of the case so it's easier to work with. Uh, right now what I need to do is I'm gonna mark out a square section that's around 12 by 12 centimeters. Not 10 by 10. It can be anywhere between like 9 to 13. The size, again, does not really matter. So the thing about helical antennas is that they are extremely forgiving. They are very easy to build. And even if you make mistakes, even if you don't completely adhere to the to the sizes, to the dimensions and everything, it's probably still, still going to perform just fine. I'm trying to figure out the best way to do this. Okay, there we go. I'm doing this. I'm doing this at a at a really weird angle, so it may not look very well on video. Uh, now I also want to mark the center of the of the square, just roughly here. Okay, yeah. not not the best estimate, but hey, it, it's gonna be fine. This is 12 by 12 centimeters. Before I cut it out, I actually want to mark the other things on this. Here we have the connector. I'm using N connectors, SMA. It's also fine. You've probably seen that with the with the small 8 gigahertz helix that uses SMA connectors. Some bolts to uh, mount this thing, and I think that's mostly it. Okay, I'm back. I thought about how I'm gonna mount it, and it actually doesn't matter. So we can just put this in the center, nicely line it up. Maybe I'm gonna do it like this, so it looks better on video. Just so it's roughly in the center. I probably didn't get the square perfect either, but it doesn't really matter. This is where the legs of the helix support will be. And I also want to mark holes for the connectors. So that's going to be a, a little tricky because I'm gonna need these three holes lined up so that when I put the helix onto it, it all aligns properly. We are also going to be doing a quarter wavelength matching strip, which is something that I haven't actually done on any of my helix antennas that you've seen, because frankly, I'm just too lazy to do it, but I want to do it properly for this video. So the helix conductor will come out from here. So the pin of the connector will be somewhere over here. I'm just eyeballing it. it it's gonna look horrible anyway. And next to that hole, so that's the hole where the center pin of the connector will come through. And I also need two other holes for the mounting bolts. I'm gonna be using only two instead of four. This is my first DIY video, so let me know how, how, how it's coming out. And that will be roughly... One will be here. And one will be here. Okay, I think that makes sense. So we're gonna drill a hole here, another here, another here, and then two big ones for the mounting. And I also want two more holes, which I want, which I will align with the mounting ones, where I will put just a piece of metal or plastic, so the entire thing will be offset, and I can actually mount it to a pipe because this is supposed to be an outdoor antenna for a long-range Wi-Fi link. So we need to think about mounting that as well. It's gonna be. 1.5 completely made up number so this will be seven millimeters uh, this let's also make them seven millimeters so I don't have to change the drill bits too much uh, and these will be so three millimeter bolts so let's make them four millimeter And this should probably also be seven millimeters, so so that I so to make sure that this pin does not actually touch the reflector plate at all. So let's make it seven millimeters as well. It doesn't matter. Literally nobody cares about about this.
There we go. And that's the plate pre-drilled, and I think I just cut myself <laughs> by, by one of these corners, so you should probably send that as well. But first, I'm gonna cut out the, the square completely. Okay, so it's mostly a square, right? It's not perfect. Uh, now I'm gonna sand down the the holes and the edges so that I don't actually kill myself while working with this. But yeah, that's it. That's how you prepare your your reflector for the helical antenna. Right. So the next part is to preform the helix. So I have the copper wire here. According to the calculator, it's going to need around 1.2 meters of it. So that's how much I stripped of the insulation. This is kind of important, so that I don't break this, this 3D printed support. Uh, you want to get something that has roughly the same diameter as the as the final helix. I have this copper pipe here, which if we can, if we if you can see it, it's sort of the perfect diameter to to work for preforming the helix. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to wind the helix, uh, wind the wire around it, basically just making a rough shape of the helix, then I'm gonna cut it out, and that way the helix will already have its shape prepared and we can just wind it into the printed support. So this is going to be kinda, kinda weird to get on camera, so bear with me. It's also important to wind it in the correct direction, so we want to achieve the, the right hand circular polarization, which means clockwise, and now I'm confused, okay, I think it's like this, yeah. And I'm not sure how well that's gonna show up on video, but I cannot do this on video. But you get the point, right? I, I take the thing and I spin it around like this. And you can see how horrible that turn is because I can't fit my hands in the video. But you just do the 10 turns or however many you want to do on the on the support to preform the helix. And I'm gonna do that off screen. And there we have it. I already cut off the rest of the cable just so it's easier to show on video. Normally I would leave it attached. But... Here we have it, that's the preform helix, as you can tell it's it's not the same length, so I'm going to stretch it out a little bit on the pipe so that it doesn't deform too much, making sure the spacing is kept at least vaguely uniform. Listen, it's gonna be for Wi-Fi only, right? It doesn't need to look good. That's the thing about helical antennas, they are gonna, it's gonna work fine, it's just going to look really, really sketch, so it's the very rough shape of the, of the helical antenna. And now... The fun part, you literally just screw it into, into the 3D printed casing and as you can see I've made, a, I've made a little mistake by stretching it the diameter shrunk a little bit so here's actually something that I learned, it may be better to straighten this out so it's not curved like this, let me get some pliers, the very tip of the helix, so it's a bit like this. That looks hard. That looks really bad on video. I'm so sorry that you have to that you have to watch this. Okay, there we go. I'm going to sp spread out the helix a little bit, the coils. Okay, I see my mistake. I made these holes way too small, so it's gonna be really difficult to get through. Okay, mm. hold on a minute. Let me just do something real quick. Okay, there we go, now it's going much better. I had to do some adjustments of the helix off screen, but as you can see now, it literally just screws in. And very slowly and steadily, I'm going to wind the entire thing into it, so I'm gonna do that completely off screen. Okay, here it is. Uh, the good news is that there's not going to be any wasted copper, uh, the bad news is that I cut it too short, so we are missing two turns. Does it matter? Not really. As I said, with the helix, it's gonna work fine. The couple bottom turns also aren't very, very uniform, and those kind of actually matter. So I, I'm probably going to adjust them. But just for now, I'm going to do a test fit. The end of the helical conductor lines up perfectly with the hole where the 
center pin of the connector will be. So let's put that in. Okay, and now let's also screw in the helix itself so that it's ev so that everything is sort of assembled. And I'm going to solder it all together at a later point. Here it is. Now I just want to solder the helix wire to the center pin of the connector without actually it touching the, the plate. So I'm gonna do that off screen because there's no way I'm gonna be able to frame that with this phone. And after that, we're gonna see if we can add the matching strip to it. And here we have it. I very badly sol soldered it to the connector. And I also thinned the entire quarter turn of the cable, of the, of the wire. Because I cut out this copper matching strip which really is just a very thin copper foil and I just eyeballed the dimensions, there's probably some formulas, I don't really know, I don't really care. Uh, in my helicos I would just end at this step and this would be a usable antenna, a usable dish feed uh, at least. However, because we are going to be using this with a, with a Wi-Fi router that actually has to transmit through the antenna, I figured let's give it the best chances of, of working and not damaging itself, so we are going to as the matching strip which I've also applied some tin onto and again off screen because I can't possibly frame it I'm gonna take the strip put it under the wire carefully so that it doesn't actually touch the reflector plate heat it up and hopefully it's going to just bond onto it and that's the matching strip done I've also expanded the hole here because the soldier kept bridging the, the two parts but this video is really a disaster. And there we have it, this is it. <laughs> I've saw, I saw there the matching strip onto it. In hindsight, it's not really a quarter turn, it's like a fifth turn, but again, <sighs> with everything that's been going wrong in this video, I, I'm, I'm over it, <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. But, I said this like twice already, I'm gonna say it for the third time. It's gonna look really bad. It already does look really bad. But the thing about the Helix is it doesn't really matter, it's, it's a very forgiving antenna, which is why I think this is the ideal solution for a long-range Wi-Fi link, such as what I'm going to set up. And actually let's talk about that when I'm outside so you don't need to... so you don't have to suffer with this horrible camera angle. And here is our Helix, mounted on the antenna boom. And right next to it you can see another Wi-Fi antenna, so this is what I've been using up until now and it's not performing as well as it should which is the entire reason why i wanted to build build a helix of my own and see if that can outperform the that wi-fi antenna and i think it can we, we are gonna see let's get it out of the way right this is a fridge uh, this is a this is a fridge server which is let's switch to vertical for a few seconds which is supposed to be housing my automated satellite ground station and it's it's working right i mean it 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 used to work currently it's dismantled for for maintenance and honestly because i ran out of money but that doesn't matter for this video we're, we're going back to horizontal okay uh what we can find inside right now is my laptop and a lot of garbage because of course if you if you're not using something for a while you just start storing random random things you don't need in it but here is where the router is housed. Normally here is where uh, the, the client computers would be. I'm gonna put a picture on screen of how it looked like when it was when it was operating. And you can see I have I've drilled a hole right there under under that spider for the antenna cable and that comes out on the other side right here and goes into the into this antenna which I'm guessing is a little patch antenna. Does it say here? It doesn't, okay. So that's what we have right now, and I've been having issues with that, with the connection being intermittent, and let's see if I can... I'm not sure if I can show you, if I want to show you my house, but... You can see there's a lot of trees in the way, you probably can't see that, but... And the router, which which this one is wirelessly connected to, that router is actually sitting behind brick walls and other obstacles, so it's, it's not the best case scenario for a point-to-point -point link, but... In summary, this works, but 
low speed and intermittent and I think we're gonna be able to see that we're getting around 10 megabit download but for for this ground station uh, the upload is actually more important than download so we're gonna have to wait for that okay so 8.5 megabits download around 6 megabit upload so okay I'm gonna I'm gonna say something it's not actually bad right compared to this is like only let's say one third of the speed that I'm getting at home so that's pretty decent for for this it's usable for this but it's actually intermittent and I think it's just it's not a solid connection right we can really figure it out with just a speed test but I'm not gonna turn off the router and unplug the patch antenna get that out of there for the helix I have a cable with an end connector on one side and this cable is actually a bit longer than the than the one going to the patch antenna so there's gonna be some extra losses in there but I don't think it's gonna matter that much now let's plug in the helix into the router and I think I've, I've said it at the beginning of the video but I'm gonna show you a picture of how I modified this router because normally it does not come with exchangeable antennas I turn it on and there we go it's acquired Wi-Fi connection uh, let's see if the computer already has internet access no uh, okay now it does it, it takes a while for the router to initialize it's an old second-hand router so let's run the speed test again <laughs> wow <laughs> you're back what I had to do I had to unplug and, and replug the Ethernet cable I don't know why but when we run the speed test now yeah there we go <laughs> that's with the helix connected and we are getting pretty much the same speed that I'm getting at home from the from the main modem so this is actually a massive improvement and I'm going to be completely honest with you I completely forgot what the original values were so I'm gonna put that on screen but you can see the improvement is is ob obvious <laughs> yeah I, I was a little bit concerned about that but I just had to I just had to adjust the cable but yeah there we go and it's a working uh, long range Wi-Fi point-to-point link antenna helical antenna whatever you want to call it uh, I, I haven't shown you really how I mounted it did I I just use a piece of plastic which came with the copper sheets that I used to make the the matching strip and then one of these uh, mounts yeah so when you when you when you take a step back like this and you look at the antenna it actually doesn't look as bad as I as I was concerned about and as I said even though the construction isn't very good you can see a lot of imprecision in the in the helix this first turn is completely mangled it still works right it still works great it, it beats this antenna like three times just in terms of internet speed and as I said it's not the speed that I care about it's the consistency so I think this antenna is going to provide a much better connection for for this fridge uh, whenever I'm able to <laughs> this is really I have a mental illness uh, whenever I'm able to to get it running again but that's going to be all for me and I thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the in the next video whatever that's whatever that's gonna be